What are some of the best classic RPGs of all time? Think about some titles. Because I'm willing to bet that Brian Fargo had a hand to play in the making of at least one of the games that you're thinking of. Hey folks, this is Riker with a video about Wasteland 3, a newly released post-apocalyptic squad-based RPG. Think Fallout meets Baldur's Gate. In this video, I'm going to talk about Wasteland 3, its systems, and my playthrough experience so far. Now, this is a sponsored video, and I was really excited to be approached to cover this game because Brian Fargo and In Exile Entertainment are legendary in the RPG scene. Brian Fargo founded Interplay back in 1983, and he co-designed their early RPGs, including Wasteland in 1988, which was before my time. But some of the first RPGs that I ever played were Baldur's Gate and Fallout, which Brian Fargo had a hand in. And in fact, Fallout was effectively a spiritual successor to Wasteland. Now, I mostly cover action RPGs on my channel, but I've been hearing from a growing portion of the community that there's a desire to take a step back from the breakneck speed of modern ARPGs and bring back more of the core RPG elements. So I hope this is a game that you folks will find interesting to hear about. Wasteland 3 can be played as a single player experience or co-op. And the game starts us off as a squad of rangers traversing a frozen over post-apocalyptic Colorado. We get ambushed, most of our squad is wiped out, and then comes character selection. You can pick between a wide variety of character duos or create your own. And because I'm a super creative person loaded with original ideas, I created a ranger named Chuck Norris. There's a robust array of character customization options. You have to allocate attribute points with each providing different benefits so you can really build the kind of character that you want. There's a ton of different skills to choose from with even a wide variety of combat skills, be it melee combat, automatic weapons, etc. In our case for Chuck Norris here, I went with melee combat. You can also pick a quirk, but you don't have to. A quirk is something that gives you a benefit and a penalty, so there's some trade-off to be weighed there. And then you can also pick a background, which confers another form of bonus and for Chuck Norris we went with the one that gives him a bonus to melee combat. Now one thing to bear in mind is that this is a squad based game. You start off with just two characters regardless of whether you're playing single player or co-op. If you're playing single player you'll have two characters. If it's co-op there'll be two characters with one player controlling one the other player controlling the other. But you don't have to worry about your first character or your first two characters covering the full gamut of skills. You're gonna eventually build up to a squad of six so you can have one guy be your medic, one guy be your tech guy, one guy be your lockpick. And of course you can mix and match these however you want but there's not this great onus that your one or two characters have to be able to cover all bases. So the combat itself is turn-based. You're not on a timer, you can plan out your moves, tactical positioning is very important, there's cover, your weapons have range, you might have different combat maneuvers to pick from, it might be easier to hit some enemies relative to others. You feel rewarded for making clever decisions in combat and punished for being thoughtless. So we managed to survive this ambush, and then without getting too much into story spoilers, we settle into an abandoned facility and start establishing a base. As we get there, alarms are going off, and so one of my characters is trained in a skill called sneaky stuff. And using that, I'm able to go in and disable those alarms, which at the start are just annoying, but it's a nice little tutorial towards teaching you how certain skills can be applied in different ways. Now, there's a lot more gameplay than just the combat itself. While combat is a core pillar of the gameplay, there's also exploration, there's interaction with NPCs, and you'll be presented with scenarios where you have to make decisions, decisions that will have some impact on the story, decisions that'll come with repercussions, both positive and negative. For example, a group of vagrants shows up at our base, and they basically want to stay there. They're they're homeless, it's freezing outside, and one of our men is saying, hey look, if we take these guys in, it's gonna be bad for morale. It's gonna be bad for troop discipline. So I feel myself having to make this tough decision. Do I turn away these, these poor people, or do I potentially suffer the consequences of taking them on? And so I choose to let them stay. And they're all shocked, and they're like, really, we, we can really stay? And I reply, man's only as good as his word. 
because I've decided that my Chuck Norris has the voice of Sam Elliott. And then I see with the reputation system that I've now gained reputation with a certain group because I accepted in these vagrants. So yes, rewarded on a game mechanic sense. It's not just a feel good action. And so there will be these sort of social encounters and you'll have conversations with NPCs. And sometimes there'll be options that you can only select if you have invested into certain skills. For instance, there's the social skill of hard ass, which is basically intimidating people and the social skill of kiss ass, which is sweet talking your way through things. So we've set ourselves up in this base. And then the thrust of what we want to do next is assemble a team to fill out our headquarters. We're looking for scientists and doctors and mechanics. And to do that, we're going to have to go into town and start recruiting. And that's going to lead us into quests and odd jobs. And there is an overarching narrative as well. But to a degree, it's also a bit of a sandbox where you have a lot of side quests that you can kind of do in whatever order you want. You can feel free to explore this world and this setting, or you can go straight for the mainline quests. So we trek our way to downtown Colorado, looking to hire people for our new headquarters. Downtown Colorado presents us with a nice little setting to explore. And by explore, of course, I mean loot everything that isn't nailed down. This is where the lockpicking skill comes in handy. Kind of an indispensable skill to have amongst one of your characters and all of these RPG games. And in picking up odd jobs around town, we end up responding to a noise complaint at an apartment. We barge in and there's a bunch of clones running around some kind of scientific laboratory. We take care of the out of control clones, by which I mean kill them. And we then recruit the chagrin scientist to join our headquarters. And there is this whole scientific angle to the game. There are science related skills. There's one that's literally called weird science, which lets you equip unconventional weapons like the frozen ferret launcher. There's also a skill called nerd stuff that lets you hack computers and robots. And there's a mechanic skill that lets you repair generators. And so all these skills give you different ways to approach the challenges in front of you. Do you want to sneak over to the computer, hack it and disable the turret or just go in guns blazing and blast the turret to hell. Now, one fairly significant encounter we had in the town was we had to go to this nightclub, this discotheque, and arrest an individual named Farron Brigo. Farron Brigo, whose name is clearly a reference to Juan Brigo, the Argentinian hockey player who competed in the 1948 Summer Olympics. Now, on a completely unrelated note, let me tell you a bit more about Brian Fargo. After about 20 years with the company, Brian Fargo would leave Interplay along with a co-worker, looking to start a new company and start working on RPGs again. And these two sort of felt as though they were in exile, and thus they found it in Exile Entertainment. They reacquired the rights to the Wasteland franchise and in 2012 began to crowdfund Wasteland 2 on Kickstarter. With a goal of $900,000, they managed to raise nearly three million dollars. I was working as a video game journalist at the time, and I remember this making huge headlines. And this proved that there was clearly a tremendous love for classic RPGs, for the Wasteland franchise, and that there was tremendous faith in the team to deliver a great game. And now that I've played Wasteland 3, I can see why. So we managed to arrest Farron Brigo. We're making progress on recruiting people to our base and building goodwill with the people of downtown Colorado. And we meet a doctor that we want to hire, and he wants us to help treat his patients. And this is a nice little tutorial, actually, to the game's health effect system. The game has a myriad number of status effects, ailments, injuries that could be applied to both enemies and players. And then you have different items that could deal with these effects between medic packs and med hypos, antidotes, suture kits. The game has a wide variety of consumable items, including ones that give you temporary buffs and nerfs like alcohol and cigarettes and syringes. And of course, you also have your standard grenades and smoke bombs, Molotov cocktails, and there are even snowballs and snowballs that you can pee on to inflict various status ailments on enemies. Choice and variety really is the name of the game. And you'll also find different types of armor that you can equip in your helm, chest, or pants. These might have different attributes, different requirements, different bonuses. There's a whole arsenal of different classes of weapons. Assault rifles, sniper rifles, flamethrowers, rocket launchers, revolvers, laser pistols, different kinds of melee weapons. And then you can also put skill points into weapon modding and armor modding, because you're going to find weapon and armor mods that you can use to further enhance your items. So we managed to recruit the doctor, which was a big win, because now we can get free healing back in our HQ. And then next, we find ourselves going on a rescue mission that ended up presenting what to me was the most significant moral dilemma yet. Again, without getting too deep into story spoilers, once we've defeated the bad guys, we enter this dialogue and we have this NPC with us who is just mortified with 
what these other characters have done. And it's real personal for her and she's very emotional. And then as players we have the option to either encourage her to kill this individual or talk her down and say, hey, we're, we're the police, we need to arrest this person. And you see this emotional back and forth between the characters and it's fully voiced. And I'm, I'm right there with her. I'm like, yeah, screw that guy. Kill him. He, he did horrible stuff. And so I pick that option and my character's like, Bring down the hammer of justice. And so she pulls the trigger, executing the guy on the spot. But then, the other characters that were with this person, just a bunch of teenagers, start attacking us. And we get into a combat. <laughs> and now we're fighting teenagers and we gotta kill all these other teenagers. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, I didn't sign up for this. So I have to admit that we, um, we safe scummed it. We, uh, we did a little, uh, rewind olio And so I'm presented with a choice. I gotta decide whether I'm gonna encourage her to execute him or, or talk her down from it. And I tell her, You pull that trigger. That ain't justice. That's just revenge. And so she's kind of upset in the moment, and we make the arrest, and then after she's kind of understanding and seems appreciative that we didn't make her commit murder, but the big picture here is that it's a game that is constantly forcing you to make choices in every way. Story choices, character build choices, moral choices. And then you gotta live with the consequences of those choices. You know, unless you save scum it. But even if you save scum it, you still have to deal with the repercussions at some point. Be they positive, be they negative. And there's just so many choices being made over so many things that you can't possibly be save scumming everything. So our headquarters is coming along nicely, but then we want to recruit a powerful political ally to serve as a consultant, an advisor. And this forces us to move out of this little zone that we've been exploring and go out, not quite into the wild, but into the overworld where we actually take a vehicle and are going to drive around to explore further locations than just downtown Colorado and our headquarters and its immediate environs. And this mission is taking us to the bazaar. Not the bazaar, the bizarre. I found it bizarre that they call the bazaar the bazaar, but it is a bizarre bazaar. And they do address how bizarre it is to call the bazaar the bazaar. So we get there, we do some talking, we do some sneaking around. Thanks to skills I've taken, I was able to detect some mines that were planted in the ground, and using my explosive skill, I'm able to go over and defuse them. We get into some combat, and I was actually surprised at the variety of enemies we fight in terms of flavor, as well as in terms of game mechanics. Their strategies, their weapons, their attack types, their attack patterns. At some point, there were literally pigs with explosives strapped to them. And the enemy would go up and light the fuse and then send the pig to blow up on us. There's this whole animal whisperer skill that lets you tame animals to follow you. And throughout our playthrough, we ended up Taming all manner of animals, cats, dogs, wolves, chickens, cyborg chickens, literal cyborg chickens. And whenever you tame an animal, it'll be controlled by the AI, but it's gonna fight alongside you until it dies. And so we're progressing our way through here and we learn that we gotta take out this, this gang across this bridge. And they're in this really fortified position. They got bazookas up on a perch. They've got turrets laid out, and so as we're approaching, we're coming up with a strategy. All right, there's some cover. We're gonna jump behind there. Those two turrets are hooked up to a generator, and next to the generator, there's an explosive barrel. So we gotta get in there, and let's try to blow up the barrel, and blowing up the barrel will destroy the generator. And with the generator destroyed, the two turrets will power down. This is our brilliant plan, right? So we're getting closer and closer, we're positioning ourselves in, but the damn generator is out of range of our attacks, so we're starting to take fire, we're moving from cover to cover, the enemies start launching mortars, and then finally we're able to get a clean shot off at the exploding barrel, we hit it, it explodes, and the generator doesn't get destroyed. And so that's when I decide, well, it's time to Leroy Jenkins this, and Chuck Norris just runs in, ready to swing that pipe, and then immediately regrets that decision. As you allocate skill points, you unlock the ability to pick perks. And you gain a perk point every so often that you can allocate into perks you have unlocked. And so I took this one perk, for instance, Double Tap. If you attack a target twice with an assault rifle, the second hit is a guaranteed crit. And this was a big help to me in this fight here. Not on Chuck Norris, on my character that actually uses an assault rifle. And this character also has this sort of VATS light system. 
where you can target different parts of a body that'll have different effects. So we managed to win the fight and that's pretty much where our adventures left off for the time being but I'm excited to continuing my playthrough to continue the adventures of Chuck Norris the Colorado Cyber Ranger pipe wielding space marine armor junk warrior. So Wasteland 3 releases today August 28th on PC, PS4, Xbox One. This is after a few years in development in 2016 they had a Kickstarter for Wasteland 3 raised three million dollars. I can see why this franchise is popular. I've been having lots of fun with this game and I look forward to sinking more hours into it. And I encourage you folks to check the link in the video description to learn more about Wasteland 3. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to InXile for sponsoring this video. Do be sure to check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.